Hey guys, welcome back to the main event. I'm Daniel. Tonight we're going back to WCW for Fall Brawl 1996. You want to play with the big boys in a cage? I don't know. I, I don't know where to come up with these taglines. These are ridiculous. Anyways, we're going back September uh, 15th, 1996 uh, at the uh, Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina. And uh, we're around like 11,000. Pretty good for WCW. And uh, I shouldn't be saying that at this point, I guess. You know, WCW's doing pretty strong right now. Uh, anyways, the main event is the War Games match. NWO with Ted DiBiotti in their corner going up against Team WCW. Excuse me. So during this, uh, during the entire build up here, the big question on everybody's mind is which side is staying on? Because Team NWO is uh, Hollywood Hogan, Hall, Nash, and Sting. And then on Team WCW, it's Lex Luger and Four Horsemen members Ric Flair and Arn Anderson. And then the fourth member is Sting. And, you know, once again, I guess kayfabe, you know, a Sting showed up and signed his name to the contract twice. I guess they didn't have the contract signing. They just kind of passed around to the locker room. Like, here, have your guys sign that one, all right? Have your guys sign out. So, either way, uh, Sting was, was scheduled for both sides. And, uh, yeah, everybody's trying to figure out where does Sting's loyalties lie. Um, I want to say, because I didn't watch the promo package for this, uh, could have, I guess, but I didn't. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, there was a whole segment early on, not in the evening, but, you know, week before, two weeks before, whatever, where, um, you know, the NWO, uh, they're, they're famous, like, you know, beat down out in, in the parking lot, and then, like, Luger's confronted by Sting, and Sting just beats the shit out of him and rides off in the limousine with the New World Order. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of questions that need to be answered tonight. So there, here we are. It's War Games. I love this event. Uh, big question, again, on this one. If you guys have to know, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but in this game, so we start things off with uh, Scott Hall and Arn Anderson, the workhorses of either stable, you know, like literally any time. Like, Hall, say what you want about Hall. Dude, that dude wrestled all the time. Like, literally, he, he was like the full-fledged, uh, well, he's the workhorse of the NWO. That's all there is to it. Uh, and Anderson, same way, from the Horsemen. Uh, anyways, uh, so you just knew in the, out of these two groups which two is going to start out. I mean, come on, who else would it be? Uh, but the referees were in the cage right off the bat, and every time, like, you know, they went for, like, a submission hold with just two people in the, in the cage, the referees like, go ahead, I'll, I'll ring bell. Like, what? So, like, was this supposed to, was this a different... Was there different rules for this one? Like, could the match have ended like a minute into it? I mean, is that what they're telling me here? I don't know. It was very, um, it was very odd. I didn't know what was going on exactly, but whatever. We'll get to that here in a minute. We'll get to the, I guess that ain't important because it ends regular anyways. But anyways, so Hall, uh, Arn Anderson, they're, they're battling it out. And of course, as with every single War Games in the history of War Games, the heels win the coin toss apparently. This time, instead of having all the wrestlers outside, because once again, we got to have that big reveal of Sting, or two Stings, I guess in this case. Um... You know, we can't have everybody out on the floor. So, and of course, they do cover it up nicely by saying, you know, there's just too much animosity, there's too much heat that uh, we can't have everybody out here. So it's just best everybody stays in their locker room before the match, or you know, until their time is going to come. And uh, so, anyways, uh, NWO of course wins the coin toss. So out comes Nash, and of course it's uh, two on one where Nash is just beating the or uh, the outsiders are beating the shit out of Arn Anderson, and then out comes. Uh, I want to say Lex Luger's next. Oh, and funny thing about Luger coming out is I keep drumming that. I don't know why I keep playing this remote. I'll put the remote over here. How about that? Not touching it anymore. Um, Luger, uh, he comes out, and it's funny because, like, you know, Nash waited. Like, it was like three, two, one, and then Nash comes out. Like, Luger runs out there with like 30 seconds to spare, gets in there, like, you know, he has like 20 seconds left on the clock, and he's like, he's in the cage. And I was like, hey, isn't that cage supposed to be locked? Like, isn't that the whole point of the referees outside? Like, isn't the point of the war games exactly? Like, to keep other people out of the ring? Like, you can't just have everybody just run in whenever they want. And I guess the argument could be that, you know, WCW hates the NWO. They do kind of view them as a threat, not just to, you know, titles and competition, but just the company in general. And so many of the referees were just like, ah, fuck it. 
run in there, beat him up, beat him up early. You know, we got to win this thing. I don't know, but I just thought it was very odd. Like, Luger don't even wait. He's in there, and like the timer's still going, like 17, 16. I'm like, he's already in there beating shit out of everybody, but whatever. So, uh, the next coming out is Hollywood Hogan, which the fact that he wasn't last completely blows my mind, because I'm like, you know, Hogan's just like, oh, I got to work, shit. Uh, anyways, Hogan goes out there, uh, you know, it, he looks good in these kind of matches, because, I mean, it's just brawling, so, I mean... I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit bad taste in my mouth from Hawk Wild. That was just a really shit match. Anyways, uh, but Hogan doing good here. Uh, and then Flair comes out, and of course Flair, uh, you know, puts it to Hogan. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, so now we got two spots left, one from either side. Which side Sting will come out on? And of course the the buzzer goes off, and out comes Sting. And I must say, I'm sure people out there are disagreeing, but from my perspective. Uh, it works. It, it's passable. It's a passable sting. It really is. Like, I, I, I wouldn't have known. Had I not known ahead of time that there was two stings in this match, I wouldn't have known. Uh, the NWO sting comes out, and of course, you know, the, t the Team WCW is just like, say it isn't so, and then, you know, NWO sting beats the shit out of them, beats them all down, and then the final person comes out, and it's Sting! Holy shit, it's Sting to like a huge thunderous pop. Sting runs in there, uh, destroys the entire NWO. And it was great because there's, there's always that moment, like yeah, when I was younger, I mean, by this point, I'm pretty sure I, I'm, yeah, I was probably like, yeah, wrestling's fake. But there's a point where you think it's real and then you start kind of, you know, it's, it, you know, everybody's telling you, like, you know, it's fake, right? I'm like, no, no, it can't be fake. It, it, come on, watch it. Look how real that is. There's always little moments that always kind of like stick with you or like, eh, that seemed kind of fake. And I always love like whenever like someone's like a house of fire, like in a Royal Rumble or a Battle Royal or just a run in when he's got five other people. And you always have that one wrestler who's trying to like sneak up on him with a double axe handle like, I'm going to go slow so he can catch me in time. And then of course the guy turns around, clocks him. It happens here, Hogan, Hogan like walks really slow, like ridiculously slow and has his arm the whole time, double axe handle time. I'm gonna get you, Sting. I'm gonna get you. And then Sting turned around and hits him. I'm like, wow, well, you know, hope you would have picked up the pace. You could have got him. Could have got him right there. But. So Sting cleans house. And of course, him beating up the fake Sting is even great. Uh, even better, I mean. Uh, which I love. I just love the fact that they do look pretty similar. Like, I don't care what anybody says, they look decent. Like, it looks. It's better than Taker versus Undertaker. Like, you know, th that was clearly obvious. Here, no. No, it was, it, it was like, no, there's two Stings. Uh, but Sting wipes everybody out. And then, of course, as he looks at Luger, Luger's is like, you're on our team, right? Sting's like, are you happy now? Like, is this, this, enough, is this enough proof for you? And then he walks out. And that's where my other gripe comes from. I'm like, isn't the cage match purpose to keep people contained? Like, this isn't a you fight and then try to escape. No, this is like a you got to fight until the end and someone has to submit. And Sting just walks out the door. Referees are out there. He's just like, I'm walking off the door. I'm like, what? You can't do that. Like, that's the, that, you can't do that. Sorry, go ahead. There we go. And I was like, ah, it, it, it really was just like, what the fuck? And I, I get it. Storyline-wise, it has to go this route. I understand. Still, yeah. I was like, you know, it, 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 you should have seen like these kick the door open or at least kind of struggle with it and then push the referee out. No, he, they're, they're trying to stop him. They're just like, Ooh. I mean, we're here to make sure people stay in. We should have locked these things, but uh, this guy over here, he's a new ref. He didn't lock it. It was his job bringing the, the padlock. He didn't do it. So anyway, Sting leaves. Now, of course, the, NW, the pendulum swings right back to the NWO. They start beating the shit out of Team WCW, uh, leading to a leg drop from Hogan on the Luger. And then, of course, the NWO Sting throws on the Scorpion Deathlock while Hogan, because he wants part of the, he, he wants credit for part of the submission, too, uh, puts a front face lock on Luger at the same time. And uh, Luger, you know, he's caught in the middle. And he eventually has to, he has to submit. He has to submit. So there you have it. NWO wins. And, of course, afterwards, Team uh, WCW still fighting with them. They're brawling. Uh, at this point, I think the Giant comes out, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember if it comes out now or comes out later. doesn't matter because they're brawling. I think it comes out later because I think they brawl first. And then uh, Savage comes out from the crowd. And just like, it, it, also, you're watching, it don't, he's, he's not even out of the crowd. He just comes out of nowhere. Like, he just... You just see him automatically mixing it up. I'm like, where the fuck does Savage come from? I'm guessing he came from the crowd. Uh, anyways, uh, at this point, I don't know what happens to Luger, Anderson, or Flair. They just kind of vanish. Like, they just disappear. Because then, uh, they 
pick the bat and the, the match back to the ring, cages are going to lift it or whatever, and they just beat the shit out of uh, Savage. Like, this, and then Giant comes out, he's joining in, and they're just beating the shit out of Savage. It's incredible. Just a beat down. And then Elizabeth, who just turned on Savage, like, just mere months ago, comes out to protect her man because she cares now. And, uh, you know, did she stick a pump in his eye or something like that? Like, wasn't that the whole, like, didn't she take a, the heel from her, uh, high heels and like jamming his eye is that what, what happened i don't remember either way i just know that like she's like no don't hurt him now don't all hurt him but not you guys uh anyway so then they they get right in her face i mean it's very heelish tactics uh they end up spray painting nwo on on a uh, savage's back you know spitting on uh, elizabeth just good stuff right there and that, that's how we end the night and then of course they come back up and they take over the commentating booth and uh yeah just really cool stuff right there so uh yeah what I like about this match, I loved it. I love this match. I think it's great all around. Uh, I love the um, the story going into it. I love the fact that you know there's two stings. I, I just, you know just that's good stuff right there. I think it told a great story of you know which side's he on. The fact that he had the, the fake sting come in first and then the real one come in, but then the real one leaves after you know he's like his feelings were hurt. No one trusts. No one believed him. And it is kind of funny that Luger, like the one guy. Who is like really in Sting's face, like, I can't trust you. It's Lex Luger, who is literally just, his entire WCW career has just been spent flip-flopping. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now he's just like, I can't trust you, really? So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie, I don't blame Sting. And I mean, no wrong, he's had the same ups and downs with the Horsemen, too. So it is kind of like, this is who you get from me? Like, this is this is the only people who can get to defend WCW at this point? Cause I be thinking, where the fuck is Savage? Like, goddamn. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, uh, that's that's how we end the night. I thought it was great. Like I said, it's a uh, it's really good stuff. I just thought it was. Uh, I love war games, anyway. I love the NWO. Uh, team WCW is a solid team. So I mean, it just it was just good all around. And of course, we get an awesome NWO victory. Uh, a lot of people complain that I don't agree. Cause I think, especially for this first year. You should have NWO dominate. Cause, I mean, it, it, you're building up the Sting returning. I know it's over a year from now, but still, um, to kind of you know bring down the regime. So uh, even though it doesn't quite work out that way, and we end up getting two NWOs, and then it just goes crazy from there. Um, no, at this point, I, I do like uh, NWO just dominating. Like it's just it's bleak. Uh, and it's just, it's truly them taking over. And even now, I mean, right now, I was like, there's only fuck up, you know, Giant, which, you know, just, I don't remember him joining. Uh, so, I mean, literally, but like, you know, it's just last month, he was the one getting screwed over. I guess he was just kind of like, eh, hey, if you can't beat him, join him. So, um, and Savage couldn't play. Like, you know, Savage eventually joins up with him, too. So, uh, yeah, it is just kind of funny to see that, you know, all these guys, you're getting beat down and now jumping ship, you know. So, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. And, uh, yeah, tune in next week, back to WBF for In Your House 10 Mind Games. So that's all I got. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.